What I'm learning so far on this van build is there's three main factors that you need to bear in mind. Patience, persistence, and perseverance. Why is everything so complicated? Yes guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode two, day four of the van conversion. Today we have got quite a few little jobs on the agenda that I want to get done before I actually start the building process of the inside. So today I'm gonna try and install a reversing camera because I cannot park for shit and I'm definitely gonna hit something very soon without the camera installed. We're gonna be changing the rear door lock because I think the previous owner, someone had tried to break into the van. So I need to sort that out and get a key that actually works for that. If you didn't see the last episode, I basically cleaned out the entire van because it was an absolute state. So dirty, so messy, but now we're in a good place that I can actually start to do things inside and just fix a few of the issues. just almost went in the danger zone sitting on the end of the door. God almighty, and I've got a hole in my pants. Today, we're gonna be installing this bad boy. I picked this up from eBay. It's just a seven inch rear view LED monitor with the reverse camera and then the video cable, which I need to run through the uh, struts or whatever you call it to get this cable from the back of the van to the front of the cab. I have no idea how you actually do this, so should be fairly interesting. So the first job of getting this reverse camera installed is removing the old brake light. Oh. The screw is extremely rusted. the old one out I'm hoping that if I stare at this for long enough it might wire itself in okay so the first tip that I need to share with you because this is something I've just had to work out Originally, in the van, once I removed the original brake cover or the brake light, there are these two screw lugs. I have no idea what you call them. These actually don't fit with the new model of the seven inch reversing camera that I've got. Yes, the camera is on. That's just half the job. Now trying to work out what the hell I do with these cables is gonna be the next stage. Right, I've just stripped some cables up there. I'm gonna test the brake light to see if I've done it correct. Yeah. What, when I press it? Oh, you got a camera there as well? Yeah. How'd it fit in there? Oh! How do you do that? Yes. Step one, the brake light works, happy days. You honestly wouldn't believe what I've gone through to try and get this rear view camera working. Look at what we've got going on here. This is all just dry fitted, but we've got a signal and a picture. I've genuinely been sat on my phone, on my ass in the van for about two hours, watching video after video after video about how to install a rear view camera. I was that desperate and that lost and confused. I ended up going on a Facebook page speaking to a chap on there and doing a live video call with him. Never met the bloke and I just asked him, look, please can you help me? And it turned out what I've bought isn't a reverse camera light, it's a rear view camera, which is different. I'm literally figuring this all out just by connecting one thing to another thing and then another thing to something else. If I can't even wire a reversing camera or a rear view camera, which is what I bought, which is different to the reversing camera, 
How the fuck am I gonna wire this entire van? I'm shitting my pants. Okay, so the plan is to remove this black cab storage unit, which is just acting as a shelf, because then I should be able to run the video cable underneath here and then be able to get to that light where I want to get the power for the monitor. What I'm realizing straight away with this van conversion is everything is gonna take double to triple the amount of time. And something which I thought would be so simple really isn't. Okay, that is out, happy days. Now I want to feed the cable from the bulkhead into here. So this is the current state of affairs. The theory of what I'm trying to do is tap into the 12 volt feed that is giving power to this front rear front cab light. Sorry. So what I'm going to do is try and, as I said, tap into it with the 12 volt feed for the monitor. So I need to cut into these cables, connect these ones up for the monitor together, and then I will have power to the monitor when this light gets power, which should be pretty much all the time. So whenever I want to use the monitor, all I have to do is press the on and off button. I'm not gonna have it power on when I'm in reverse only because I figured I'd rather have my own manual control of when I want it on, regardless of whether I'm in reverse or not. But for now, I'm gonna replace these halogen bulbs while I've got the cab light down because I bought some LED ones, which uh, should be a bit brighter. This is the current power that it's giving off from the halogen bulbs. And once I give this a quick clean up and replace with the LEDs, should be a lot brighter. So these are the little LED lights which I bought to replace the halogen lights which were in the cab light initially. Hopefully no electric shocks. Right, let's see. Oh dear, what's happened here? Might be because the engine needs to be switched on. Oh, fucking hell, what the fuck's happened here? There we go. I managed to get them in and working. No idea what it was, I just swapped them the other way around. Do they turn off? Yes, happy days. They're not that much brighter, it has to be said. Here goes nothing. Oh shit. Got a bit of a spark there. I hope I've not just blown the fuse. Oh dear. Now we want to connect the red and the black together. So in theory, once I connect this black cable, hopefully I should have power to the monitor for the reversing camera and the lights should also work. I've got nothing yet. That's not a good sign. Why, why, why? The lights have got power. So the monitor should have power. A few moments later. Well, I've just worked out why the monitor's not getting power because as I must have been pulling this cable through the headliner, it's disconnected the black cable from this little filter fuse box so that must be it so I'm gonna have to rejoin this in here and oh my god I pray to the gods this works because this has been a faff I've done it it works oh my goodness me after so much time of not figuring out how it's meant to be wired in. I now have a reverse camera or a rear view camera that works, is live, and I have a picture. Look at that, there we go. Immense. 
So basically, what's going to happen is I've ordered a, uh, a rear view mirror, which should arrive in the next few days. And when that arrives, I will clip the monitor straight up there and happy days. The job is a good one. Honestly, it has taken me probably almost a full day to figure all this wiring out from talking to the random guy on Facebook to searching videos online, reading forums. I really was feeling very overwhelmed and stressed and a bit disappointed and annoyed with myself because I was thinking, if I can't even wire a reverse camera in, how am I gonna wire the rest of the van? I'm the kind of person that gets very stressed and very annoyed with myself if I don't know how to do something. And, you know, it crossed my mind just to give up. But uh, with perseverance, persistence, and doing research and taking a deep breath in those moments of stress, taking a step back and thinking methodically, why isn't this working? Why is that cable powering this? Blah, 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 blah. I managed to get there and now I have a reverse camera working. So another common issue with these Fiat Ducatos is that the heater doesn't work on certain uh, levels. So let me just show you what I mean by that. Right now we're on zero, nothing. Two, three, oh, three, nothing. Four, we've got power. And doing research online and a massive shout out to Luke's van life because he has helped me massively so far. He told me to buy a resistor that needs to be replaced. So I'm now gonna change the resistor and it should get the other three dials that aren't working, working. Okay, this is the old resistor. I'm not sure what or why it stopped working, but old one, new one. I believe this is the issue. I hope it is anyway. So this is the moment of truth. Does the heater now work on all of the levels? It does. You probably can't hear it very well on number one. There's three, four, three, two, one. One is working, I promise you. <laughs> Happy days, I feel like a bit of progress is getting there. It's all these tiny little jobs which I wanna get done before I start the main build. So let's crack on with a few more. I want to replace this bumper because it's slightly cracked and broken. And also I snapped two bolts in here at the back. Oh no, oh shit. The screw has just rusted and completely snapped. Should come straight off now. Why is everything so complicated? Oh God. Sometimes a bit of brute force does the job. Right, so the next job that I need to do to get this van functioning properly is to replace this rear door lock. Because I think it was broken into in the past, the key for the rear door doesn't go in at all. You can see there how manged up and broken it is and how they tried to break through. So I bought myself a replacement one of these which comes with a key so I'll just basically have one key for the car and then another key for the lock. The central locking is on a cable just here, which looks like it's completely separate to this lock. So hopefully it should be a straight swap out and a straight swap in. I'm coming to learn that it doesn't always work like that. I need baby's hands. Everything's so fiddly. Big boys, we are on like Donkey Kong. Now, screw it back, jobs are good and This is it, the moment of truth. Does the door work? Oh yeah, we got a working back door. Right, 
there's one more job that I want to get done today. I'm going to replace the left side tailgate light. You probably can't see it on camera, but there is a slight crack in it. Oh, and I've bought myself a replacement. You might be able to see it on the camera now. Let's see. Yeah, slight crack there. So that's why I bought a new one. So this unfortunately isn't as simple as I thought it would be. I'm gonna have to unscrew the covering on the existing one, swap the bulbs over onto the new one. That's another job ticked off the list. So sadly, I've lied to you again because this is now gonna be the last job that I wanna get done. The right hand side mirror top and bottom is broken but I bought a replacement mirror. So we'll try and fix that now. I don't want the glass to shatter. Come on. Oh, oh. Nice. So just simple, replace that. Come on. Is that on? Oh my god, is it this thing? Oh. Come on, you twat. Oh, shouldn't be this difficult, surely not. Mate, yeah, hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, Christ, I almost got my finger. I just realized why it won't go on. It's the wrong mirror, because I can easily clip the old one back on. This has a big ring to fit it. My new mirror has a small ring, so I've ordered the wrong bloody mirror. Well, there was me saying, if you need a Fiat Ducato mechanic, I'm your man, but clearly I haven't got a clue. I'm gonna end the video here. I know I didn't do half of the things that I said I was gonna do in this video, like rust prevention and filling in the holes on the floor, but we will crack on with that in the next video. At least in this video, I managed to get the rear view camera set up, which took probably about a day and a half, two days almost. I fixed the rear tailgate. I've taken the damaged bumper off. I've fixed and changed the lockout on the rear door. Whoa! <laughs> So that's all done. I'll end this video here and I'll catch you in the next one where hopefully we will be a little bit closer to doing some proper van conversion stuff to this van. Catch you in the next one.